Hello, uh, welcome everyone for the third and the last webinar of WSO2 Enterprise Integrator uh, release webinar series. Uh, in this webinar, we are going to look at uh, what are the new features and improvements uh, that are shipped with uh, Enterprise Integrator new release, that is 710 release, in more details uh, with a couple of demonstrations. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Chanika Giganagi an associate technical lead of VI team. Uh, with me, Heshi the head here is also conducting this webinar. He's a senior software engineer in EI team. Mm, also, uh, we would like to make an announcement. Uh, if you have any questions, you can raise them uh, using questions tab uh, in the go to webinar control panel. Also, uh, we will share the recorded webinar uh, with slide deck with you later. Let's look at the agenda of to today's webinar. We will start off with a brief introduction of WSO2 Enterprise Integrator 710 release. In this release, uh, we have introduced a couple of features to extend uh, the support of both conventional ESB architecture and microservices architecture. Also, uh, we will demonstrate uh, to you a few of those new features and improvements. Then uh, we will talk about the observability solution that we have introduced with this new, this release. We have done a set of improvements to our uh, development tool, the Integration Studio, uh, to increase the user experience. Uh, we have uh, enhanced the look and feel of uh, the tooling, and we have introduced a new integration project concept. Finally, uh, we will demonstrate to you the new connector properties view and the CSV transformation connector. I will briefly explain uh, to you what the WSO2 Enterprise Integrator 710 release is, as uh, this is already covered in the first webinar of this release webinar series. If you take uh, Enterprise Integrator, uh, that consists of a micro-integrator and streaming integrator. Uh, the micro-integrator is not a new thing. Uh, it has, it basically has a Synapse as the mediation engine, similar to a previous release of ESP and EI. So basically, uh, this provides uh, the integration capabilities such as file integration, data integration, SO integration, and so on. Uh, so, and also for uh, streaming ETL and event stream integration, you can use the streaming integrator. Uh, both of uh, these integrators have their own tooling capabilities. So the integration studio is uh, there to develop artifacts for micro integrator. And uh, you can use streaming integrated tooling to develop artifacts for streaming integrator. In this webinar, uh, we will basically focus on the micro-integrator, the, the runtime, uh, and the integration studio. So let's see uh, what are the new improvements and features of micro-integrator uh, new release, which is version 1 to 0. We have developed earlier version of micro-integrator uh, with the mindset that it will be used in container-based deployments. So uh, therefore, we have made it lightweight and optimized deploying microservices architecture. But uh, then we thought to extend uh, that support to work uh, in both conventional DSP architecture and microservices architecture. So we have added a set of features to make it happen. As a result of that, now the micro integrator is optimized to deploy in both centralized and decentralized deployments. Let's see uh, what those new features are. In the previous release of micro integrator, uh, there was no cluster coordination among nodes. As uh, MI is designed to deploy in on containers originally, uh, therefore, uh, the nodes were running as individual units. But when it comes to uh, VM deployment, it is, uh, it is required to work in a coordinated manner to scale up the number of nodes to ensure high availability. 
So in this release, we have uh, brought back the cluster coordination with a new implementation. We have introduced our DBMS based coordination where all the cluster coordination is happening via, via an RDBMS data source. Uh, if we take uh, this diagram, this deployment, uh, there are two nodes uh, which communicate uh, with a coordination database. So I will explain this further with the demonstration. Uh, we have uh, pre-recorded uh, the demos as we have limited time for the webinar. We'll explain now uh, when the videos are playing. Um, so here, uh, sorry about that. So here there are two in my notes. I have, uh, I have deployed a few tasks in both nodes. Let's see uh, how to configure uh, uh, cl cluster, uh, cluster coordination. It is a simple configuration, just a matter of configuring the database. So in the deployment toml file, uh, you I, I have configured the data source with the ID WSO2 coordination DB. And uh, you can define the data source configuration as well. So I have done the same in the other node as well. Uh, in other words, uh, both the nodes are connected to the same data source. Let's start the uh, node one. Now the service getting started. Okay. Uh, when when the node started you can see uh, this node is selected as the coordinator and uh, all the tasks are scheduled in this node it's because uh, by default we are using active passive location resolve algorithm uh, that means uh, one node is working as the active node so when it comes to task all the tasks are running in that node so uh, let's start uh, the node two. So once it's started, uh, you can see that uh, the node one is getting the notification like uh, saying uh, the, the member is added to the cluster. So now let's see uh, the failover scenario. Let's uh, shut down node one. Uh, when a node leaves the cluster, the other nodes get notified and a coordinator node will be elected among the available nodes. As there is only one node in this scenario, node two will be elected as the coordinator and all the scheduled tasks will be uh, previously scheduled in node one will be rescheduled to this node. Now the now what the tasks are running in uh, node Okay, now uh, let's look at the next feature, uh, the readiness prop. Um, this is very useful in container-based deployments. Uh, when it comes to Kubernetes, it is required for the Kubernetes container management system to know uh, when the service up and uh, running and ready to serve requests. Therefore, we have introduced a service which gives success response if the service started successfully and error res response otherwise. Let's start the micro-integrator. Uh, 
once it is started uh, you can uh, see the management API is listening with the port, um, the HTTP port 9201 and the HTTPS port 9164. Let's invoke the service uh, to do a health check on the server. So let's mock uh, localhost 9201 and help. Let's send the request. Okay, uh, so you, you can see it gives ready state with 200 response. This means the server has started successfully and there are no any 40 services. We have introduced hot deployment in this release of micro integrator. So I have started in my server. Now I'm going to deploy a carbon application. Let's go to the integration studio. I have created a sample artifact, an API. So I'm going to deploy that in the running micro integrator to simulate hot deployment. So uh, with hot deployment, you can deploy artifacts on fly. So that means you don't have to restart the server every time that you are doing a change in the artifacts. This is very useful in VM deployment. So now uh, the artifact is copied to the uh, deployment fault of the running a uh, micro integrator. So now let's tell the MI logs. You can see the artifact is deployed uh, in the running micro integrator. Uh, one thing to note that uh, we have disabled our deployment in Docker image to preserve the immutability nature of container-based deployment. Along with micro integrator runtime, uh, we have done a couple of improvements to the micro integrator dashboard okay um, now i'm now i'm starting in my uh, and there are some carbon application already deployed in the server uh, then uh, let's start uh, the dashboard uh, let's go to the uh, location where the dashboard uh, distribution is there. Uh, when you have extracted the MI, uh, you can uh, get the dashboard uh, home location in the same folder. Uh, let's start the uh, dashboard. Now the dashboard uh, is getting started and uh, you can get the URL. Uh, from the logs, the dashboard URL. Can uh, browse, you can go to the uh, dashboard. Micro integrator dashboard is a supportive component which was originally designed to view artifacts only. Uh, but then we got few queries to improve that with some management capabilities as well. Uh, similar to the management console that we had with previous releases of ESP and EI. Uh, as we are using a self-signed certificate, you have to trust the certificate. Uh, initially, uh, the dashboard, uh, internally, the dashboard communicates uh, with the management API of micro integrator. Uh, therefore, in non-production environment, you have to trust the certificate again to allow the browser to communicate with the management API. Now we, now we can log into the uh, dashboard. Once you log into the dashboard, you can view artifacts uh, 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 by going through each uh, type of artifacts. For an example, if you go to proxy services, uh, you can uh, get a list of uh, proxy services deployed 
in micro integrator then uh, once you go into a particular proxy service you can get details of it uh, in a, uh, in addition to details uh, you can uh, perform some management stuff as well like uh, deactivating activating uh, proxy services or enabling disabling tracing similar to that uh, you can uh, view other artifacts like uh, inbound endpoints, message process, message stores, APIs. In this release of dashboard, uh, you have the capability to you have the ability to uh, download logs. Uh, this is very useful when the developers can get logs without uh, uh, asking from uh, their works. You can uh, change log levels of loggers also, um, and uh, you can uh, um, you can add uh, loggers uh, on the running uh, micro integrator. Uh, without uh, doing a server restart. Further uh, user management capabilities are also there. You can plug a user store to the micro integrator. You can uh, view users and also you can add users. So you see that it is listed under users. Uh, so these are some of uh, the, so there are some uh, other features shipped with micro integrator. Uh, due to time constraint, we will move to the next topic. We have introduced observability solution with this release. Uh, this is uh, based on uh, well-known, widely used and proven projects uh, such as Grafana, Prometheus, Loki, and Jaeger. Uh, let's do a quick demonstration on that. So I have set up a uh, Grafana, Prometheus, Log and Jaeger on my machine and also a uh, micro integrator to not plastic is running in my machine. Um, I have already sent some requests to micro integrator. Uh, so if you go to the Grafana dashboard, you can see how many uh, nodes are there. Uh, the services count, request count, uh, error request count and so on uh, in the uh, cluster uh, metrics dashboard. And also, you can get uh, the nodes uh, that are that are in the in the in this cluster, the nodes list, and also the services li list. Uh, what are the services that are deployed in in this cluster? And also, you can get uh, the request rate, uh, the error rate, and the response time, which which was captured uh, over the time. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, you can get an idea of the peak time uh, the uh, of the request. And also, when, when once you go to a node, a particular node, you can get the uh, node-wise uh, statistics. Um, how how long uh, this node is running? Uh, the services count, the re total request count, the error uh, request count, and also and also uh, you can get uh, JVM related uh, information as well, like uh, CPU utilization, the uh, heap memory thread count and so on. Um, and also uh, you can get uh, the services list uh, that that are uh, deployed uh, in this particular node. Uh, and also similar to the previous dashboard, you can get uh, the request rate, error rate, uh, the response time, 
of this uh, um, uh, related to this node. Uh, once you go into a particular proxy service or a service, you can get service-wise statistics. Uh, for an example, in this proxy service, you can uh, get uh, uh, how long this service is uh, up and running and also uh, the uh, total number of requests, uh, the uh, uh, request rate, uh, uh, the error rate, and uh, the error percentage. Um, and uh, uh, uh the requ uh, the uh, response time uh, of this particular uh, proxy service and also at at the bottom you can see uh, uh, the logs that is that is that are related to this particular uh, proxy service In addition to that, you can uh, trace messages uh, 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 using this view. Uh, uh, you can trace messages of each request. Uh, you can trace the payload in the message flow uh, by tracing over each mediator or se sequences. Um, this is very uh, useful to troubleshoot uh, uh, issues. Similar to proxy services, we can get statistics of uh, APIs. Uh, you can get similar kind of uh, dashboard, uh, the total number of requests, the error rate, and so on. Also, you can get uh, statistics of uh, inbound endpoints as well, similar to uh, the previous dashboard. Uh, it is pretty much similar to previous dashboard. So, okay. Uh, now let's see uh, what are the improvements that we have done in our uh, integration studio. Heshita will explain them to you. Thanks, Janika. Uh, let's have a look at what is new in Integration Studio latest release, which is uh, version 7.1.0. In this release, we mainly focus on developer experience and providing an easy to use UI while supporting the latest features of WC2 integration space. With that in hand, we were able to provide you the most feature-packed and user-friendly integration studio to the date. Let's see what are the key improvements we have done to incorporate the above key aspects. One of the main aspects we have introduced, we have improved, is the support for CI-CD flows. It is an on-demand improvement we have provided to support most of the modern systems which use CI-CD. For that, we have introduced new integration projects and Maven profiles, which will de demonstrate to you later. Then we have embedded the latest runtime, which is Microintegrator 1.2.0, with support for all the new key features such as hot deployment, configuration wizard, etc., as described work by Chanika. Further, we have improved monitoring features for embedded Microintegrator using runtime service wizard monitoring dashboard support, etc. We have further improved the UI aspect also, where we completely revamped the getting started page and introduced a new theme and some editor improvements. Another main feature we have introduced is the connector properties view improvements. Further to that, we have introduced two new connectors, which are CSV connector and email connector to support most demanding functionalities. And there are many more new features in the latest release. We have created several videos to save your time in this webinar. These videos will demonstrate the above key features and I'll explain them.
you can see the ui improvements we have done in this release even from the start of the studio we have revamped the getting started page and introduced a single page which you can get to know all the main functions done using the studio in the first look you can see the samples on the right side uh, and of the page and if you want to start from the scratch using the uh, uh, usual projects and stuff you can see the links to create projects in the left side of the page and you can see there is further help you need from the left side of the page so for this demonstration i will create an integration project which we revamped later in this uh, release Sorry for that. As you can see, the project structure is also revamped. This is mainly done to provide better support for the CI/CD flows. In here, we have introduced a unified project type, which is integration project. This aggregates all the other project types related to integration flow, such as config project, data service projects, and various exporter projects. For this demo, I will create a REST API inside For that, uh, you can right click on the config project and select a new REST API. I will name the API as simple message API, and the context I will provide a uh, response. This is the context path of the this will create a, a simple API, uh, a template API. Uh, we hope to add a, uh, generate a payload from this API and respond. Uh, it will be a simple JSON payload. So for that, I will add the payload factory mediator. just to generate the simple JSON payload. And we'll go to the properties view and select the media type as JSON and add the simple JSON payload. Now the payload is generated. And now we have to respond uh, using a respond mediator. So any request comes into the API will respond to the payload we have just created. Now we have added the respond mediator also. Now we just have to deploy the service. In this release, we have introduced this new feature, which is configure embedded server wizard. This will let you add all the useful configurations for the embedded server in one wizard. You can see it has editor to edit the deployment toml file. And with this, you can change the configurations to test your integration, such as port offsets, GMS connection factories, and many more. You can see the editor to edit the deployment toml file. Furthermore, you can add uh, many configuration using that. Further, you can add something to the lib directory of the embedded MI server uh, using this wizard. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you need, you can add a jar file uh, to the droppings directory to the embedded MI wizard, embedded MI. So this is also uh, provided from this wizard. I will explain this uh, more in uh, later. Uh, for now, I will save this uh, 
configuration so as it is and uh, go on. you now will select the project and finish it will deploy to the server now the micro integrator 1.2 server is started once the server is started you can see another fresh feature we introduced with this release which is the runtime services view this view lists all the deployed services in the embedded mi server and you don't have to manually check for the deployed service URLs since it is listed here. You can directly you can directly copy the URL and just call it. You can see the URL here, the deployed API. Further to that, we have embedded an HTTP client to the studio in this release. So you don't have to use a third-party HTTP client to test your services. I will paste the URL and click on the green button uh, to test the API. You can see the response is coming. This is the same payload we have constructed from the payload factory. Now I'll demonstrate the hot deployment support, which is introduced in my latest release. For that I have for that I have changed the payload factory, uh, the payload of the payload factory uh, a little bit, and uh, I'm going to deploy the project artifact to the server again now. Now you can see the server is not getting restarted. In the earlier versions, it, it, it is restarted. Uh, you can see the server is not getting restarted and the uh, artifact is deployed successfully. Now we can confirm that using the uh, HTTP client and you can see the change uh, message is coming from the newly deployed API. I will stop the server to demonstrate the next feature, which is the configure embedded MI wizard. You can see uh, I am going to uh, do a port offset to the embedded MI wizard. Uh, by default, there is a port offset of 10 when it's uh, included in the integration studio. Uh, so it's already has an port offset of 10. So I am going to increase the port offset by another 10. Uh, then the final offset will be 20. You can even see the wizard uh, from the deployment wizard also. Now you can see the URL is uh, uh, on port 8300. It means the port offset we have applied is uh, up. So before it was 8290. We can confirm that using the HTTP client. Uh, we will increase the port and do the request. And you can see the port is uh, 8300. So you can see the deployed 
Likewise, you can change most of the server configurations from the wizard or deploy lib or droppings, which can be used when using JDBC drivers or JMS. Another new feature we have introduced is embedding the monitoring dashboard. You can click on the link uh, to open it. We are on a port of set of 10, so I am increasing the port by 10. And I'm using the admin admin credentials to log in. So you can see the deployed API from the monitoring dashboard. This is explained uh, thoroughly by Sanika uh, in the first part of the video. So you can see the API deployed and you can do any monitoring task from this monitoring dashboard. Now I will describe the improvements we have done to the Synapse unit testing framework. For this, we have added more details into the test results. We can see that in the demo. Uh, in the samples wise also, we have a new API testing sample. You can see it uh, in the dash, uh, getting started page. Uh, you can uh, use that API testing sample also if you need. Uh, but uh, now I am uh, continuing with the same project. Uh, Now I'm going to add a unit test suit like this. I'm including the test artifacts and providing a name for that. And now I'm going to add the test case. The path is the context path itself. And we don't need input payloads and properties. And I'm going to add the assertion. I'm asserting the body message body from the API. And expected value is the JSON payload we are generating from the API. The error message will be something when it's failing. Can add the test case. Can add the test case and I will run the unit test now. You can see the test case is passed and now we have added some more details to the test results so you can get to know whether the deployment is passed mediation is passed or the assertion is also passed earlier it was only assertion we could check you can see all the three states are passed because of that build has passed so this is a passing test. Uh, now let's check a failing test. I'll change the expected message a bit. Make it level three and uh, it will fail. Now we have to check the failing test case. Now I'm running the unit test and it should fail. And you can see this is far more detailed than the previous versions. Uh, you can see the states which is failed. Deployment is passed, mediation is passed, and the assertion is failed. 
and uh, you can see the failure state also it is assertion and the exception is the one we have defined and you can see the failure also the actual message is hello world 2 but expected message is hello world 3 that's the reason for the failure so you can see uh, this is far more detailed than the previous versions and you can get a good idea about the test cases and the test results let's move on to the next video which describes connector improvements editor revamps and the CICD support In this video, let's take a look at the connector changes, editor changes, and the CICD flows. We have introduced two new connectors, which are CSV module and e email connector. I will start with CSV module. I will add the module first from this. And as usual you can add the csv module also from the connector store and you can see there are several operations in the csv module uh, uh, you can see it in the palette there are these operations in the module is to address the difficulties developer faced when working with csv for the demo i will use the most basic csv operation which is json to csv because we have constructed the json payload in the payload factory before but we can use the module to do far advanced transformations like filtering csv columns frozen and etc for this this demo i am changing the payload a bit because uh the uh, the existing payload has only one field uh for a successful transformation i mean uh, uh, for a visible transformation uh, we can uh, we uh, might have uh, two or three uh, rows data rows in the json payload uh, because of that i have uh, changing i am changing the json payload I'm updating the JSON payload, and in the in the CSV JSON to CSV operation also, I am defining uh, two header names because uh, in the resulting CSV we might we should have the header line. So I am defining the header line as message and the content. So the JSON message will uh, transform into the csv we have added the csv module so we have to add the connect exporter project and export the csv module to the mi because of that i'm creating the connect export project and adding the connector inside the exporter from the workspace and now i am deploying the project now it's deployed now we can see it in action you can get the url from the runtime services view and paste it run and you can see the converted csv 
is uh, responded. The header line is there and the data rows are there. This is the same converted one from the JSON message we have added from the payload factory. You can see the JSON message also. We had uh, uh, three JSON objects, which, uh, which has two fields each. Now I'm going to add the email connector also. Uh, this is also a new connector we have introduced with this uh, release. Uh, and uh, while demonstrating the email connector, I will demonstrate the connector properties of improvements also we have done. For that, I am adding the I search for email and you can add the email connector. The reason behind creating this is we had connectors to address specific service providers, but not a general SMTP or pub tree support. That is why we have created the new email connector. Now the connector is added and I will use the send operation for the demo purposes. I'm just uh, demonstrating uh, this uh, email connector. I mean the connector properties view and the details of the email connector. Uh, uh, as Since we are in short of time, I am not uh, demonstrating the functionality and uh, how it works. I'm adding the same operation. And you can see the uh, newly revamped uh, connector view, properties view. You can see all the properties uh, are ta not table based now. Uh, and uh, most of them are form based. So it's uh, easy for the user and uh, you can input the details uh, easily. Uh, the connection is also something we have introduced uh, lately. Uh, in the new release uh, in the connection uh, we have uh, as you you might know uh, some for some connectors like gmail salesforce and uh, so connectors uh, we need uh, connections uh, so uh, in the previous releases connections should be made for each of the connectors if we use connectors uh, again and again we have to uh, add the connections again and again also but uh, we have externalized these connections uh, and uh, we can reuse these connections uh, for the later. I'm filling the details for the SMTP connection and uh, we'll fill the username and password also for the demonstration purpose and uh, fill in them. Uh, then you can see uh, local entries added uh, with the details we have provided. This is the reusable connection. So we can use this uh, in other connectors also. Uh, we'll use another connector and check whether we can add the same connection. Yes, it's there. So we can reuse that uh, connection we have created in other connectors also. So you can see the expression field is also there. We can directly provide the expression uh, in the earlier versions. We couldn't uh, provide it like that. Uh, we 
it's mandatory to use the expression wizard uh, to add the expression but now we can if you need we can uh, use the expression wizard also like this otherwise uh, you can directly input without an expression also uh, with this new connector properties view we were able to provide checkboxes drop down menus and other constructs which are more user friendly to the user uh, instead of the table view we had uh, earlier uh as since we are short of time uh i'm uh, in this uh, i'm ending this video uh, so you can uh, you can get an idea about the other features as well from the documentation and uh, the other resources uh, we have published on the new release Uh, and now you saw the key features we have introduced with this release uh, and there are many more usability and functionality improvements that you can experience in the latest release uh, as we are running out of time we will conclude the webinar we would like to invite all of you to download the ei 710 release and try out the new features thanks all for you to join in the webinar uh, and it's uh, time for any questions Okay, uh, we got a question asking uh, uh, in the clustered coordination, uh, what will happen uh, when the database service is unavailable uh, due to network issue? Uh, yes, actually it is a single point of failure uh, or the cluster coordination information reside in the database. Um, then all the nodes uh, will, when there's failure, uh, when, when there's a network failure, all the nodes uh, will stop performing coordinated tasks. Um, until the database is available. Uh, only the coordinated task will stop and uh, the rest of the operation will continue uh, without any issue. Uh, we got another question asking uh, with the MI dashboard UI uh, support uh, the clustered MI nodes. Uh, yes, uh, it supports, but uh, um, uh, uh, it will be uh, it, it it basically points to the uh, points uh, to a single uh, node. So we, we we have that in roadmap uh, to have a consolidated view. Uh, but right now uh, it, it it doesn't give uh, the uh, node wise uh, uh, node wise uh, dashboard in a single view. Uh, we got another question. How the new integration project differs from the integration project which we had in the previous versions. The integration projects in the previous version contained only Synapse configurations. To support CICD flows, you had to create a separate Maven multimodal project. But in this release, we have revamped the integration project concept and now you can do the Maven multimodal project functionality to using the integration project, which is nesting uh, several integration project component types like uh, config projects composite exporters connect exporters etc and make it a uh, i mean uh, and it will make it able to build all the nested components in a one maven command uh, we got another question can we add a separate registry project as a dependency in my maven multimodal project just like i have common library as depend dependency to my main microservice in java uh actually uh from the from our architecture we can't do that uh, because uh we we have to add the registry project uh inside the maven multimodule and it's not global so for each of the multimodule uh, uh you have to add that but uh, when deploying the registry project is uh if the registry project is deployed uh in the same server we can use uh such uh things 
Uh, we got another question asking, uh, do we have to install and set up uh, Grafana, Prometheus, and uh, other tools uh, separately? Uh, yes, uh, for BM, yes, we have to do that. Uh, separately, we have to install and set up. Uh, but for Kubernetes, uh, we have de developed uh, home charts uh, where you can run uh, just one command and it installs the deployment for you. Uh, you just need to have uh, the uh, Kubernetes cluster and we have them installed, and that's it. Uh, since we are running out of time, uh, uh, now we are concluding the webinar. Uh, so, hope uh, you will download the latest EI 710 release and the Integration Studio release and try out the new features. Thanks all of you to join in the webinar and have a good day. Thanks.